Hey guys, welcome. <laughs> we have a friend here. Welcome to Artistic License, my stream on Thursdays where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Right now, apparently Lady wants some cuddles. I actually had to go into the office all day today. I didn't do any working from home. So she feels very sad and neglected. She didn't get cuddles while I work. So um, she has crawled into my lap as soon as I started setting up the stream and she is not moved this whole time. <laughs> hey, Katie. Hey, Kendra. Oh, she's gone now. She says, bye. I got enough cuddles. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. Yeah, y'all on my Instagram saw it. I also shared some pictures in the Discord server. Um, but I decided that, yes, of course. <laughs> I decided that um, trying to take a cruise with long hair was going to be too hard so I chopped it all off and yes I am going to be going on a cruise I'm going on a birthday cruise next week is my birthday that's right Jane thank you so much welcome in um I'm gonna be taking a cruise next week for my birthday I had a goal when I got my vaccine that um, I was going to take a vacation a trip that was not an obligation because during the pandemic I did not travel except for a couple times that I really kind of had to right so um, I was gonna do something that was a vacation not an obligation and we're gonna do that next week we're finally gonna go on a cruise so that does mean that does mean oh my gosh Oreo what are you doing He's walking behind the computer, so I'm a little uh, nervous. Oh, I think he's going to be okay. All right. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that for a week. So that does mean this is the last stream for a little while. Don't worry. It's not going to be too terribly long. I'm only going to be gone for a week. We'll be back on Thursday the 28th for some more Final Fantasy X. Um, but, uh, but today we're actually playing a game called I Wear Cleaner 2077. This is another Bez game. So Bez made that Neopets game that we played that, uh, was so heartwarming in the end. And so we're going to play another game by this same author and full disclosure, Bez has been a big supporter of me. They've been a patron for a long time and, um, we really enjoyed playing the, sup Oreo? <laughs> we really enjoyed playing the Neopets game. So we're going to play another one of um of their games today but before we do of course we are doing our personality quiz because we love to do those okay welcome welcome in k how's it going all right i'll pop the link for you guys in the chat so y'all can do it with me um karen please send me your luck what luck what luck do i have kendra i'm not familiar with this tell me about it <laughs> yes, we had Lady and Oreo already on the stream today. You'll probably see them again because, as I said, I was at work all day. So they're kind of missing, they're missing some pets. Okay, so this personality quiz is which 90s cyberpunk psychological anime are you? We're taking this one because the game we're going to play, I Wear Cleaner tw uh, 2077, is, uh, is Bez's reaction to cyberpunk 2077. So that uh i think felt like that was uh, that was a uh, critical let's do some 90s cyberpunk right lunar yes you do i gave you mod i needed some more mods um i love them both but oreo is my fave i know i know Kay. oh my god lunar tier two again what oh what you you bless me too much you bless me too much i love you i love you so much lunar whatever you need you always just you let me know you let me know what you need, Lunar. I'll hook you up. Okay. Let's get straight into things. Robots. Yes, all the time. Yes, but not in excess. Robots are a dumb cliche or nah. I'm okay with some robots. Um, I'm not a big, like, robot person, though. So we'll go yes, but not in excess. Some robots is okay. Pick a lyric from Manic Street Preacher Song, Faster, that speaks to you the most. I know I believe in nothing, but it is my nothing. I am a pioneer slash they call me primitive. I've been too honest with myself slash I should have lied like everybody else. Oh, I like that one. Uh, Self-disgust is self-obsession, honey, and I do as I please. <gasps> oh, wow. I should go listen to this song. It sounds really good, but we're going with that one. Okay. Pick a shade of blue. Deep indigo. The color of the sky on a warm day. Turquoise. Virtually pastel or virtually purple pastel blue. Well, we got to go with that one, of course. I mean, like, hello. 
I'm all about the purple. Got to get that uh, that pink and that blue and that purple. You know what I'm saying? All right. Thoughts on personality topology such as MBTI. Not perfect, but the idea of categorizing humans' personality in a pseudoscientific manner is fundamentally good. Ooh, hard disagree. If y'all watched my MBTI history video, you know I do it just for fun. Um, my favorite thing, I would die for it. I mean, I do love it, but like not to be taken seriously because that leads to all kind of bad things. Okay, dot, dot, dot. Mm. Um, kind of sucks, not gonna lie. What does it actually come in handy for? It comes in handy for character creation. Okay, so definitely not that one. I guess we're gonna go with um, my favorite thing. It's not my favorite thing, um, but I do love doing it. I think it's a great ton of fun, so long as it's not for serious. What technological advancement are you most scared for? Mind control, combining humanity with the internet to a larger degree. I'm already like not so into the web 2.0-ness, so maybe that nuclear advancement. I'm definitely not scared of nuclear advancement. Um, so we're going for combining humanity with the internet to a larger degree. The internet is terrifying. I know, I spend too much time on it. Um, Jane, of course, yes, we can do yellow for you. I didn't hang the ears up on their posts behind me today because the kittens were being so hyper um, that I was like, they're totally going to come in here and destroy, destroy, destroy. So we're going, we'll, we'll do yellow. I like that you picked yellow. I mean, it matches um, what I got going on today. It matches my shirt. I've got some yellow around the bunny here. Okay. How do you feel about humanity overall? We could be doing better, but I believe in the power of human goodness. Oh, oh, that does speak to me. Okay. Insert nihilistic quote here. Wow. I can't figure out who I am, let alone who the rest of Earth is. Humanity as an idea is already flawed, but through knowledge we can do better. Disagree. The information age and getting more knowledge out there has not helped. Stop this philosophical bullshit, I swear to God. <laughs> no, I do believe in the fundamental goodness of people. I think people are fundamentally um, collective and trying their best. Okay, what causes your existential dread? My relationships to others. My relationships to my own identity. Nothing really, man. Uh, definitely my relationships to others cause more existential dread than my own identity. For me, anyway. Okay, choose a dumb thing I secretly want. A uh, yellow eyeshadow. Hey, Yellow eyeshadow is not dumb. What? Um, a plushie shaped like a spray bottle. Mm. A CD of water sound effects. I, I've, I had one of those once upon a time back when I actually had t uh, CDs. A mushroom shaped TV. Well, I don't, I guess I'm not a secret person. So like I, I would want this and this, but like it's not a secret. We're going to go with the CD though. That feels like me. Choose a music genre that would sound... This, there's some grammar errors here. Choose a music donor that would soundtrack a movie about your life. Okay, that's phrased weird. Anyway, um, dream pop slash shoegaze, IDM slash vaporwave slash ambient. Do I like that? Cricket noises. No. Old jazz rap dug up from slash moo. <laughs> uh, we're going with the vaporwave ambient. I like that. Last question. How was the quiz? Kind of sucked, to be honest. Pissed off and show me the results. Great. All right. It was fine. This one was okay. I'll judge it for sure based on what result it gives me. Serial Experiments Lane. Oh, it gave me the right answer. Well, I love this one then. Okay, so you're a natural learner with some abilities that people underestimate as they seem unconventional on the surface. You'll likely have a lot of ideas on how to improve society and the world around us. However, are sometimes unsure of how to go about them. You probably spend a lot of time on the internet, maybe too much. Oh, that's true. Try to find the people who will accept you for you and everything will get easier from there. I feel like this description, this whoever wrote this didn't really fully understand Serial Experiments Lane. I mean, it is about the internet and the internet taking over and how we might deal with that, but it's more about the psychosis of what Lane is going through and, and what it's like to be alone experiencing psychosis and hallucinations and things of that nature. I feel like they kind of missed that part, but anyway, I've watched Lane too many times. <laughs> This person's probably just watched it like once or something. Uh, the other possible answers are Neon Genesis Evangelion, Ghost in the Shell, and Perfect Blue. So y'all can do this quiz too. Um, I'll pop the link in the chat one more time. If y'all do it, tell me what you got. I want to know. 
These are all good animes, by the way. Neon Genesis, Evangelion, Ghost in the Shell, Perfect Blue, and Serial Experiments Lane. I would recommend every single freaking one of them. They're all good. FYI, y'all, that was Mr. Jane. I was making tacos and <laughs> told him to do it. <laughs> oh, good. Well, thank you, Mr. Jane. Thank you for that. Okay. Let's get into the game, y'all. Let's get into the game. So here we go. Boom. We can switch right over. I Wear Cleaner 2077, a game by Naomi and Orbez, a.k.a. Bez, he, they. All right. Please open the sidebar and turn on the volume. Okay, I think, I guess, yeah. This is a sidebar. Okay, it's open. And my volume's already on, so I guess we're good there. Just making sure I've got it framed right. Y'all can see everything. Yes, you can see everything. Okay, fabulous. Click here to begin. We're going to play as much of this as we can until 8.30. I don't know how long it is. Uh, this is literally the only screen I've ever seen of this game here that we just read together. So everything past here is going to be brand new for me. Let's go. What they're planning is nothing small. Make no mistake about it. They're planning for 30,000 years ahead. Colossal things. Colossal crimes. They stop at nothing. They're out to destroy everything. Whoa. Greetings and welcome to Eyewear Cleaner 2077. Have you played this game before? No. Okay, let's start at the beginning then. Day one. It is 2077. You are a white, straight, cis man smoking in the rain. Oh boy. You are clothed with the best of neon fashions. Okay, that's a little bit better. And equipped with the best weapons the underground society has to offer. In short, you are awesome. Well, that's true. I am awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Ooh, some music. Oh, I love this. Okay, just kidding. You're a non-binary fellow currently sitting in your shitty apartment. It's early in the morning and you have work soon. <gasps> Far more realistic. Okay. <laughs> uh, you turn off your alarm and get out of bed. Okay. The steps of getting ready are easy. You brush your teeth at the tiny-ass bathroom. Take a moment to shower while avoiding getting water in your head port. Oh boy. And get on your Digicore worker uniform, complete with name tag. It's actually getting the urge to want to work that's the hard part, but it's something you have to do. Your name is blank and you're tired of this shit. Things haven't been the same since Rodney left home, but there's not much you can do to change things. Okay, I guess Delvin is the canon name of the character, but we're going to change that. We're going to be Karen. <gasps> Yeah, big oof, big oof here. My life is garbage. Okay. You take a deep breath and grab your back. You look around the room, seeing what to put inside. Is is the desktop audio loud? It looks like it's kind of loud. I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit, y'all. Because I think I'm not talking over the music very well. Okay, I think that's probably better. Tell me if I turned it down too much. Okay. Your ID, the tag that reads Karen Bliston can't live in neon city without one of these it holds your digibucks gets you into every digicore facility which is pretty much every building in the city basically your whole world is on here so i guess this is a company town this is digicore's company town that i live in so that's that's wonderful it's a bit too much yeah i thought it was it looked like it probably was okay it should be okay now, but let me know if it's not your lunch, the sustenance that keeps you going. Today, it's a lean dog with cheese you grabbed from the vending machine last night. Great vending machine hot dogs, my favorite. You could put both of them in your bag right now, or you could check your digifeed. You still have a few minutes before you have to leave, after all. Okay, we're going to be real. I'm going to check my digifeed. You pull out your phone and look down at your digifeed. You don't really follow friends on here. You don't really have friends in general. Oh, that's sad. I do have friends in real life. You guys are all my friends. But you do follow a varied crowd of celebrities and normal citizens. The digifeed is exclusive to Neon City residents. You have to write your own ID number to log in, so you don't get to see what's going on outside. Ooh, dislike. Okay. You scroll through your feed. Scarlett Johnson, singer, 1.1 million followers. Seeing the sky when I wake up in the District 1 high rise is the best feeling in the universe. Hashtag morning moments. Oh, boy. VTube Central. Oh, I didn't get to read much. Okay, you look up. There's still a few minutes. Want to check it again. Oh, 
Yeah, but no. Okay, let's just go to work. Okay. You shake your head. No point in getting too distracted. Absent-mindedly, you grab your ID, grab your bag, and then head outside to get to work. Your apartment is on the sixth floor of a rather large complex, located in District 3, which is affectionately known as the Monkey's Paw District, thanks to the old store of the same name. Luckily, your elevator in your building was recently adjusted to be pretty high speed. You go inside it, and a moment later, you're at the ground floor. Okay. Oh, big buildings. Okay. Neon City's glorious lights wash over you as you step into the smog-covered dawn. On the street, people pass by, some with artificial limbs. You've even heard of androids unleashed into the world, though that's nothing but a rumor at this point. Science fiction bullshit. But knowing Digicore, they'll be reality before long. That's who rules this city, Digicore. Logos and advertisements brandish the streets, in between the wanted posters for low life, well, everywhere but the last district, District 4, a place full of decrepit and rotting buildings. It's between Digicor and a few smaller companies, Arlington's, Boar Corp, all fighting to rule over Neon City. But everyone knows Digicor will eventually win out. Well, if they have Digibucks and stuff, I mean, obviously, like they've already won, I guess. That's who rules the city. Okay. Not that you care. You're just trying to keep your head down and earn the digibucks it'll take to survive. That's all you've got, and frankly, that's enough on your plate. It sounds like my life is full. It doesn't take long for you to reach the checkpoint. Neon City's Digicore Force crowd the area, checking every person passing by for their proper paperwork. It doesn't matter if you lived here 15 minutes or 15 years, they always check you. Wow, I hate that. I hate I hate that when you go to the store over and over and like there's a new clerk there and they got to check your ID again. You know, it's nicer when they're like, oh yeah, she comes in here every day, you know? Let go of me. A voice on your right forces you out of your thoughts and you turn to see the cops have their hands on a young woman. Sorry, little lady. I don't see the right ID. A cop says, a sneer on his face. Looks like it's down to the detention center with you. My ID is right here, look, she screams, but it's futile. The enforcers drag her away anyway. Not an uncommon sight at the checkpoint. You see it at least once a week. Oh, dark. Ugh, a lady next to you says. You notice she's wearing a striking red dress. She turns to you. You see the way they smirk when they take people away? I hear they get extra money for each arrest. I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. She shakes her head. I hate cops. Fuck them all. Yeah, me too. I hate them too. <laughs> They're not all bad. Oh no, A cab. I hate them too. She gives you a smile. Looks like you and I are on the same team then. She says, good. Next, an officer with the name tag Gerald calls you up and you nervously walk forward. Give me your bag, Gerald snaps, and you quickly obey, praying he won't find an excuse to delay you or worse, arrest you. Ooh, I don't like that music. The cough rustles through your bag, grumbling to himself. He takes out your ID and examines it for a long time. Does he think it's a fake? Finally, Gerald closes your bag and hands it back to you. You can go. He snaps. Thank goodness. You start to walk away. Excuse me. Um, trying to keep your head down. And you're almost through the checkpoint when you hear a voice call out to you. Karen? Is that you? The voice sounds familiar, but you can't quite place it. You turn around, see their face, and it all clicks. Rodney! You exclaimed. I haven't seen you since you left the eyewear store. How have you... Your voice drifts off when you see what he's wearing. It's a Digicore Force uniform. Wow. Oh no. Oh no, my friend's a cop now. <gasps> hey, Rodney gives you a big grin, but he sees the hesitance on your face. Yeah, after I left the eye place, I was at a loss for what to do, but I eventually decided to join the police force, he flexes. I just finished training a few days ago. Now I'm officially at the rank of officer. Cool, huh? Oh no, but this is my friend. Okay, we're gonna say, mmm, yeah. Thanks, I'm glad you think so, he looks happy. I was a little worried about what you might think, but I'm glad you approve don't really approve my friend I'm just not trying to not be a dick I heard about how corrupt the force is before I joined see but don't worry he smiles I want to change things around here you know got to do it from the inside to do it right I think I'm really getting somewhere 
Somehow you highly doubt that. Yes, I do highly doubt that. Well, it was good seeing you, Rodney says, waving. I'd love to hang out with you sometime. Hey, when you're off work, I can take you on a ride along. That could be fun, right? Sure, you say cheerfully. Sounds great. I mean, I guess. Just call me if you want to join me. He presses a button on his robotic arm, and a moment later, your phone buzzes in your bag. I gave you my new number. I'll see you later, Karen. He waves you through the checkpoint and is gone. Whew. You turn and watch him blend into the crowd, unsure what to feel. But you don't have time to feel anything. Get going or you'll be late for work. You snap out of it and continue your commute, journeying forward through the neon city streets. It doesn't take you long to get to your destination, the Digicore Eyewear and Accessories Store. This is where you work, right next door to the Neon City Police Station, the Digicore Eye Surgeon, and the Synthroid Factory. Well, that's convenient. I assume those are all points of interest. You take a deep breath and walk inside. The role of eyewear cleaner wasn't the one you imagined yourself being in, but here you are, scrubbing glasses and implants to ensure the place is sanitized and fits Digicore's vision nicely. The place has long since lost the cheery mood that Rodney used to bring in. Now it's quiet, almost darkly so, until customers come in. As you walk inside, Sam, who's an older gentleman, looks up from the front desk. Hello, Karen, he says, giving you a wave. Good to see you. You nod and wave back. Good to see you, too. Sam's the closest thing you, to a friend you have here. Well, after Rodney left, that is. Oh, that's so sad. One of my friends was a co-worker and the other friend is a customer. My dude, my dude, get some real friends. Ah, <sighs> Further in, Devin, who's about your age, is giving a customer the sales pitch for VR implants. As expected, he barely gives you a second look. Carly, on the other hand, smiles when she sees you. Hey there, Karen, she says as she straightens the shelves. Ready for another work day? <laughs> no. Carly's smile fades as you speak. Can you, um, excuse me for a moment, she says. You watch awkwardly as she fast walks up to your manager, likely reporting your actions now. What report for what? Just because I said no? Come on, y'all. A moment later, Harrison walks up to you. Heard you weren't the most enthusiastic about working today, he says, frowning. Is that true? You open your mouth to respond, but before you can, he says, I don't want to hear it. Just keep your thoughts to yourself from now on, or I'll be forced to deduct your pay today. Understand? Now put your chip in now. Oh, there's a chip too? Okay. You nod and obey, walking in the employees only room. Inside, five chips are plugged in, one for each employee here, and yours is 100% charged. After hanging up your bag, you take the chip and put in your head port. A moment later, he appears. Ah, good morning, Karen, the boss says, his hologram settling at the corner of your vision. My time is money, so let's not waste it. Get to work, stat. You nod, already filling the boss chip weighing heavily on top of your brain. At one point, Isaiah Warbaton actually ran his own stores, but that was before he bought out. He was bought out by Digicore. Now he can afford the holograms to run things for him while he himself sits at home getting richer, lucky thinking about me are we the boss asks i'm flattered but any more of that and it will cost you right even thinking things other than work can get you penalized so quick you quickly regain your focus it's time to start no oh no dislike okay you are stationed near the front of the store at a tiny table. There's plenty of eyewear left over from yesterday to clean, so you better get to work. You pick up your paper, pa paper towel and sanitizer. Scrub rinse. You run the towel over the first piece of discarded eyewear, a VR chip implant. One down, many to go. Scrub rinse. There's a certain rhythm to it, one that fits well with your brain. You actually enjoy your job, if you're being honest, but it's the fact that it's making you insane, you're making an insanely rich man richer that keeps you up at night. Scrub rinse, scrub rinse. I feel like that's a mood, right? That's probably how a lot of people feel about their jobs. If the system was set up differently, they wouldn't hate their jobs so much, you know? You soon find yourself getting into it, but you've learned not to let your mind drift. You don't want to lose digibucks after all. Scrub rinse, scrub rinse. As you clean, customers come and go from the shop. VR implants are sold here and they've been rising in popularity as of late. 
Digicore has plenty of sample implants, which you have to watch after customers try them. Scrub rinse, scrub rinse. A customer comes in demanding you install his eye implant. You tell him in a tone of someone who has said this a million times, and will say it a million more, that the store just handles implant sales, and if he wants them applied, he has to talk to the Digicore surgeon next door. He eventually gets the point and slinks off, but not before he's yelled at you a bunch. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> and the morning goes on, scrub rinse, scrub rinse. Harrison taps you on the shoulder. Go have lunch, he orders. It's time for your break. You let out a sigh of relief and remove the boss chip from your brain. Isaiah Warburton's hologram flickers for a moment, then disappears. Your thoughts are yours again. Wait a minute. You didn't bring your lean dog, dang it. Oh, because I checked my... Because I checked my thing, my feed, before I went to work. Oh no, I can be hungry. At least you have your ID, you can use it to buy something else. So you venture outside to the vending machines, stomach growling. The vending machines are just around the corner from work, you walk up to them. Then, and then you hear a voice. Hey you, I recognize you. You turn around and see a man walking up to you. A smile on his face. He's wearing a Digicore uniform too. Though this one is for the mines, not the city work. I've seen you around the vending machines, the man explains. Name's Carl. How about you? I'm Karen, you say. Nice to meet you, Carl says. I'll get straight to the point. I know you work at the eyewear store. We're trying to set up a union for Digicore workers to get better conditions. You interested in joining? Oh, fuck yeah. Well, that's new, not unheard of, but not something you'd ever thought you'd be involved in. You choose your next words carefully. Go on, I'm listening, or unions always crumble around here. What makes you different? Go on, I'm listening. Carl smiles. I knew you were the receptive type. He says, trust me, the union's going to work because we have a big advantage. Oh yeah, you ask? Interested? I know it's a long shot, Carl says. Our union just got a big boost. Arlington is sponsoring our cause now. They stand behind us. So one of the smaller companies is joining the fight, but the cynic in you is skeptical. Surely Arlington's has a reason for doing this. I can see you have questions, Carl says. Fire away. You voice your foremost concern. What does Arlington's want with the workers? Why are they involved? What did you call heart? I want to know what Arlington wants. Arlington's actually approached us with a representative and they said that they wanted to join the cause, Carl explains. They agreed to stand behind our union. I'm not totally sure why, if I'm being honest, but I'm glad to have their support. Mm. So you want to join. You pause for a moment and then speak. Sounds risky. Don't unions have a reputation for having Digicore spies in them? Oh my gosh. No. We're going for it. I'm interested. A grim bakes up breaks out on Carl's face. I'm so happy you'll be joining us. Having one more person to our cause is always a good thing, he says. Thanks so much for trusting us. I promise it won't be in vain. He takes out his phone and presses a few buttons. A moment later, your phone buzzes. My contact information, he says. Call if you ever need anything. Come back tomorrow and we can talk more. I have to get back to work, Carl says, walking away. See you around. This is real sus, y'all. I know like I'm going to gung-ho join, but this is real sus, okay? You watch him go, then turn back to the vending machine. What do you want to get today? It'll take away from the money you've been earning today, but at least you can eat. Um, lean dog, chili cheese pack, ham and pepperoni. I guess we'll go for the cheapest, because that means I have negative three digibucks now, so that's great. You punch in the number for your chosen food, and soon it slides out of the hole at front of the machine. You grab your meal and walk back to work. By the time you get there, you finished eating. Devin and Sam are gone from the break room and have returned to work. You sit down, alone. Soon enough, you two return to work, putting your boss chip back inside your head as you walk to the front of the store. Time passes quickly. Soon, Harrison taps on your shoulder. Go take your break, he orders. You have ten minutes. You give him a nod and remove the boss chip, putting it into your pocket. Then you walk to the back of the store to the restrooms. The bathrooms are supposed to be gender-neutral spaces. Digicore made an announcement months ago, and it got them a great amount of good press, but then management labeled them male and female anyway to avoid confusion. Hmm. 
So it was just for the press release. Which bathroom will you go in? The gender neutral women's room or the gender neutral men's room? <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go in the gender neutral women's room. You walk inside the women's bathroom. The place has a few cushioned chairs at the front and the stalls in the back are neat and clean. You duck inside one, do your business quickly, and leave. The store is unusually busier in the afternoons. People come in and out for neat glasses and cool eyewear. Oh, usually busier, not unusually. One of those people is a regular customer. His name is Rudy, and he comes in here every week. Every time, he looks at the VR implants, studying them carefully as he stares at each one. And each time... He talks to you. Which do you recommend, he asks, pointing at three of the VR implants samples on display. Is there a particular one I should buy? Uh, probably the HDY device. It's got great space. Maybe the Y2X. I hear it's super fast. Honestly, I couldn't care less about those things. Um, I'm going to recommend... I see the... Who's eating the cords back there? Y'all quit that. Okay. Um... We're going to recommend the fast one. The man grins. Super fast is something I'm looking for in a VR device. Then to your surprise, Rudy picks up the Y2X model and brings it to the counter. I've been waiting a long time for this, he says to you. Been saving up for months. I'm going to use it to change some things. Oh, wow. Rudy finishes his purchase and is about to leave, but then he approaches you. Hey, I got a question, Karen, he says. You almost... For I, you almost forgot you were wearing a name tag for a second. <laughs> Do you think it's possible for one person to change the world, even a little bit? You think for a moment? Sure, why not? Or realistically, no, not really. Yes and no. I think it's a lot of individuals over time, you know, and then eventually someone tries it and it works. So, sure, why not? Rudy smiles. I knew I saw a common soul in you, he says. He takes out his phone, and a moment later, you feel your phone buzz. I've sent you my cell phone number, he says. Let me know if you want to change the world with me. And with that, he's gone. You watch him go. His question's still echoing in your mind. I see I got rebellion level inquiring now. Oh dear, I'm afraid you'll be getting another deduction of Digicore bucks then, Warburton says. Get your mind focused back on work, and I'll make sure it's not too much of a loss. <gasps> right, you quickly refocus on cleaning the eyewear. Oh, this is brutal. Okay, the rest of the day goes by uneventfully. You continue to scrub the eyewear until it's late into the night and the store has to close. There's still some things to clean, but legally, Digicore can't yet keep you after closing hours, so you put them away for tomorrow. You say goodnight to your coworkers, grab your bag, and step outside. As you do, your pay for the day is transferred over. Back in the neon streets, the wanted poster for Low Life have taken out all of the advertisements. You've heard it's because they're more active at night. You pick up dinner from one of the vending machines, eat, and then ponder. What do you want to do now? Do we want to head to the bar, walk around the city, or go back home and rest? Sorry, I thought I heard the kittens back there messing with the lights again. <gasps> Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I need to make some friends. You know what I mean? Like my only friends are my old roommate, coworker, whatever it was, who's now a cop and a customer. So let's head to the bar. You make your way to District 2 where your favorite bar is. You have to pass through the checkpoint, but thankfully it's closed at this hour. District 2 is dingier than District 3. Not that District 3 is much better. Nevertheless, District 2 is known for its active nightlife, but the area you're going to is a quiet little corner, not populated by many people, so your walk goes uninterrupted. You reach the bar in about 10 minutes. The familiar sight of Harry's home comforts you and you walk inside. A few regulars are already there, drinking the night away. You sit down at a bar stool and wait to be served. A moment later, Terry, the genderqueer bartender, walks up to you. Hey, Karen, Z says. What'll you have tonight? You have a few regular drinks that you've settled on. Tonight you choose, oh, cherry cocktail, hard lemonade, or light beer. One bourbon, one scotch, one beer is suddenly stuck in the head. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. If I knew it, I'd, I'd sing it right now for you, Katie, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> uh, okay. I think I prefer hard lemonade. So let's go with that. 
That sounds good, Z says. I'll get it when I finish these glasses. One sec. Z continues to scrub dishes. There is a short silence. So how many times did customers misgender you today? Terry finally asks. None for a change, thank Christ, you reply. That's good, Terry says cheerfully, scrubbing a glass. I've had a few misgender me today, and since Harry doesn't care, I've had to correct them myself. Good, kick their sorry asses. Correcting people is scary, though. Yeah, I don't, that wouldn't bother. Um, I know, but you gotta be consistent, Terry insists. Otherwise, you get misgendered all day, and that hurts like hell. Have to stand up for yourself, Karen. Um, obviously, I don't do that. I just work at the eyewear cleaner. <laughs> uh, sometimes you're the only person who can do that. Terry walks away for a moment and comes back with your drink. Here you are, Z says, giving you a smile. Enjoy. Thanks. You're welcome. Z walks away to tend to other customers. I guess Terry's a friend, right? Why don't you consider Terry a friend? Um, they seem cool. You take a sip and feel your drink soothe your soul. That's the stuff. Feels good. You're tempted to order another one after this, but you're a real lightweight. Well, that's that's true to life. Don't want to get too drunk tonight. You enjoy your drink and get up feeling buzzed. That was great. Now it's time to go. You want to leave Terry a tip? You usually try to. How much do you give, though? Um, this five digit bucks. I really don't know if this is supposed to be similar to dollars or not. You transfer the money to Terry's tip jar account. The QR code is on the coasters and walk out of the bar. It's time to go home. Keeping your head down, you walk through the streets and make your way back to the apartment complex. One elevator trip later, you're at your room. You sigh and hang up your bag. It certainly was a day, and you're going back tomorrow to do it all again. But at least you have two days off after that, so you can rest soon, finally. You look around for your own VR port. It's not as high-end as the eyewear or eye implants, but it does the job. And plug it in. Immediately, your user interface surrounds your body. There are a few things you can do before bed. What to do first? Uh, check the news, play some games, go to bed. We're definitely playing some games. You look through your game collection. You don't get to play games as often as you'd like, so you mainly focus on Sky's Rim. <laughs> uh, but there's also another game you could try. Sky's Rim or the social game. The social game! Let's try to make some friends! The game that comes up with every VR device in the city. Well, everyone sold by Digicore anyway, which is most of them, if not all of them. It teaches you how to correctly act in the city and how to spot possible criminals in your day-to-day -day lives. This is not what I thought this game would be. I thought we would maybe be a chat room and we can make some friends. <laughs> You've never bothered to play it before Boot It Up? Yeah, I'm sure what, I already, I already made the choice. Let's stick with it. You boot up the game and an unblinking eye is suddenly in front of you. Then it fades away and is replaced by a message. Welcome to the social game. This is a guide to teach you proper etiquette in Neon City and how you can protect yourself and others. We hope you find it fun. Let's get right to it then. You're standing outside when you see somebody drop a package on the street. What do you do? Ignore it? Incorrect. In these incidents, it's best to tell an NCPD officer about this mysterious package. It could be illegal contraband. Or they could have just dropped a regular ass package. Your friend suddenly changes your dinner plans. What do you do? Wait. Changing plans is reportable? No. Incorrect. When somebody does things suddenly like this, report it to the NCPD. <gasps> oh no. Somebody won't maintain eye contact with you at dinner. What do you do? I hate this. This game in this game, this social game is not very social. This is very anti-social social game. Ugh. I am torn between what I know the game wants me to do and what I want to do. I'm going with what I want. Ignore it. Incorrect. Tell an NCPD officer about this activity. Not maintaining eye contact is a sign of mistrust. Oh my god, there's too many rules here. I dislike it. Then a message pops up. A stylized post-it note that reads, don't forget to go to bed, it's getting late. You wrote that for yourself when you stay up too much playing games. You should probably go to bed. Perhaps you can do more questions tomorrow. Thank you for the hydrate, Lunar. I need lots of hydrates during these talkie games, you know. 
They're kind of unsettling though. Yeah, they're super unsettling. I don't like that game. You put the game away, unplug the VR port, and go into your sleep sack and lie down. Soon you'll be fast asleep. Day two. I did. I did need the hydrate lunar. Thank you. <laughs> Day two. Okay, your alarm buzzes through your dreams and wakes you up instantly. You open your eyes and slowly get out of bed, turning off the alarm. Then you do the usual. Brush teeth, take shower, get dressed. You're all ready to go. You look down at your phone. Do you want to check your digifeed? Well, last time when I checked my digifeed, it caused me to forget to pack my lunch, so I'm going to put everything in my bag. You put your lunch and ID into your bag and head outside. It's time to go. As you head to the checkpoint, you let your mind wander. You wonder how many people will look at glasses today at work and think about what you were doing last in Sky's Rim. And a weird thump sound comes from behind you. You turn and immediately freeze. A figure is standing next or is standing in the shadows, wearing all black, including a mask that covers their face and nearly hides their eyes from you. You recognize who it is from all the wanted posters, the vigilante low life. They look up at you and hold a finger up to where their lips are, signaling you to stay quiet. How do you react? Why are they out here? In the morning rush hour, what's wrong with this person? Um, let low life get away. Oh man, that changed my rebellion level to enthralled. I'm not going to call no police on somebody if they're not hurting me, you know what I mean? You get the vigilante a nod and they nod back and thanks. You turn away for a moment. When you turn back, low life is gone. Did you do the right thing? As you walk around towards the checkpoint, you feel like you might have. And that feels good. Oh. You walk up to the checkpoint blending in with the crowd until a cop calls you forward. Hey, you, he says, pointing your way. Your bag, now. You walk forward and nervously obey the instructions. Will you be allowed to pass? The cop rustles through your bag, finds your ID, and seems satisfied. You've learned not to put your phone in there, otherwise those rats might take it for themselves. All right, you're good, the cop says, shoving your bag back at you. Get out of here. You do so, running past the checkpoint and escaping into the crowd. You find your way through the streets, and soon you're at work, and you're immediately greeted by a peculiar sight. A customer, the only one currently in the store, is chatting a mile a minute with Devin, clearly unable to shut their mouth. People aren't usually this enthusiastic at the eyewear store. And my game's an environmentalist project, the person says excitedly. I think it could bring some awareness, change things. Not the first time you've heard that. You ignore the customer and head to the back, plugging in the boss chip. This is some, like, really happy music. <gasps> Good morning, Karen, Isaiah Warburton says. Get back to work, please. You obey his instructions and walk to the front. The customer is still there chatting. I'm always looking for playtesters, she says, so let me know if you're interested. Ma'am, says Delvin calmly. Why don't we review the VR eyewear you requested? You want one that will load better graphically, correct? Oh, right, of course, she says. Sorry, I got carried away. Let's look at those. You take your place at your station and start cleansing the eyewear from last night. That's when she approaches you. Hi, I'm Samantha, she says cheerfully. I see, I didn't see you there. I've been telling everyone at the store about my game. She lowers her voice. It's not exactly something Digicore would approve of, she whispers. So what do you think? Sounds interesting, going against Digicore, not interested. Oh no, but I've got the boss chip in my head. I've got the boss chip in my head and I don't want to lose more money. Okay, we're gonna lie. Sorry, Samantha. This isn't how I really feel. Oh, bummer, she says. Well, I'll give you my contact info anyway in case you change your mind. Oh, good. She pulls out her phone, and a moment later, your phone buzzes. My number, she says. Call me if you want to test it. And with that, she's gone. You look down at the eyewear and get back to work before you get penalized. Scrub rinse. Scrub rinse. The morning passes smoothly, and soon, Harrison tells you to take your lunch break. And you actually remembered to bring your lunch today. Yay! Yes, I did, because I didn't spend time scrolling. <laughs> uh, you slink off to the break room. Devin and Sam are there already. Devin ignores you. Sam gives you a nod. 
So is Neon City everything you hoped for, Sam? Devin asks. I remember you were telling me how you didn't want to move here. Sam laughs. Yeah, well, us older folk aren't big fans of change, he jokes. I was pretty well-rooted where I was, and the idea that I had to leave, well, it really stung at first. I was anxious coming here, but I got used to it. Um, I want to jump in. I'm going to interrupt your conversation, guys. What's up? Do you miss where you were, Sam? Sam and Devin turn to you. Devin's giving you a glare, but Sam gives you a friendly smile. I do sometimes, he admits, but I know I made the right choice coming here. The air is filtered after all, unlike most of the country. True, Devin says. Oh, that's so sad. So they don't get clean air other places. There's a moment of silence, then Sam says, How about you, Devin? Is Neon City everything you hoped for? Devin grunts, Well, I was born here, so I can't complain. I don't know if it's everything I hoped for. I never hoped for it to be anything other than what it is. And I guess that means I'm fine with it. Sam laughs, That sounds about right, kid. That sounds about right. <sighs> you check the time on your phone and see it's almost time to return to work. So you leave the break room. You go find your boss chip and plug it back in, then you return to work. Late in the afternoon, two women walk inside the store. You notice they don't really buy anything. They just browse the shelves and eye the workers, which includes you. You're already being watched by your boss, so it's a little creepy to be watched by some customers. Finally, one of them walks up to you. Hey, she says quietly, and you realize you recognize her. It's the woman in the red, desk, red dress from the checkpoint. Wait, I thought she got arrested. She got let go that quick? She smiles at you and opens her mouth to speak. But at that moment, Harrison says, Karen, take your break. You turn to her. She says, it's okay. That's probably for the better. Perhaps we can talk outside. I have a proposition for you. Um, sure. Um, no thanks. Not interested. Yeah, no, I want to know. Fantastic. I'll meet you at the back of the building. And with that, she's gone. You go to the back room and remove your boss chip. Taking that out of your head is always such a relief. Then you go to the exit and leave the building. The woman in the red dress is standing outside. Upon seeing you, she walks up to you. I don't have time to explain all the details, but I and a few others are planning something big, she says. Something to help wake people up about how the police treat people around here. And I need someone with the eye store to play a part in it. Or someone in the eye store. Since you're next door to the police station. Would you be up for a little danger to help a cause that needs it? Oh, man, I'll do it. Let's go. Danger, danger. The woman smiles. Fantastic. That's fantastic. I appreciate that in a person. We'll be in touch. If you decide to join us, meet us here tomorrow. She pauses, then says warily, I've put a lot of trust in you telling you this. Please, don't break that trust. Oh, no. I won't, lady. With that, she turns around and walks away. Soon she's gone. Spend the rest of your break relaxing or call the police and report their actions. <gasps> no, spend the rest of your day relaxing. You lean against the wall and slide down to the ground. Every minute you check the time. And at this very last minute, you remember you should probably pee before you go back to work. So you run inside, take a quick trip to the bathroom. You choose the gender neutral men's room this time and get back to work. You scrub and scrub eyewear as people come in until finally the day is over and the store closes. You stop wiping and put away your cleaning supplies. Then go to the back and remove the boss chip. You're free and you got money. Yay. I got way more money today, so that was good. Head to the bar, walk around the city, go back home. Let's walk around the city. You decide to walk around the city. Yes. You decide to walk around the city a bit. Enjoy the smoggy air. Okay, you're not walking out here for the air. You're doing it because you love the city at night. Neon City can be really nice when it wants to be, which isn't too often. You roam the streets without a real goal in mind. Eventually, you leave District 3 and find yourself in District 2. District 2 is dingier than District 3. Not that District 3 is much better. Nevertheless, District 2 is known to have an active nightlife, with sex workers roaming the streets. You've learned to ignore all of them and just keep going. When you turn the corner, you find a surprising sight. A person wearing dirty clothing is walking the streets, and upon seeing you, their eyes light up. Spare some change, they ask. It's surprising to see a homeless person in Neon City. Panhandling is prosecuted severely here, and anyone who even tries to is 
tries it is to be immediately arrested. That's what happened to you in the past, but you got lucky. Read your white male privilege kicked in and we're let off with a warning. Your new job came through not long after that. They look up at you with expectant eyes and hold out a QR code. Spare some change, they repeat. Um, we're going to give them some change, yes. You pull out your phone and scan your QR code. It goes to a DigiPay page and you decide to give them five DigiBucks. You transfer the money to their DigiPay account. Thank you so much, they exclaim, tears in their eyes. Any little bit helps, so I appreciate it. They turn to walk away. Uh, oh, let's warn them. Wait, the police crack down on homeless people. You should be careful. Their eyes widen. That makes sense, they mutter. Thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. I'll be more careful. Do you know if there's a place I can go to instead of here, somewhere the police won't crack down on me? You think for a moment. District 2 is a good place for outcasts. I'd stay around here if I were you. District 4 is a place where the police rarely go because of the abandoned buildings. You might want to go there. Oh... District 4 is dangerous, though, right? I don't know if I should tell them to go to the dangerous place, even if they're less likely to get caught. I think I'm going to tell them stay in District 2. I see, I see, they reply. I haven't been here long, but it's good to know that's a safer place. I'll stick around. They nod in thanks and walk away. You watch them go, then walk away yourself. It's late, and you should be getting home anyway. You reach your apartment complex ten minutes later and go inside. Soon, you're back in your home. You are soon in your apartment, plugging in your VR port. The user interface cloaks your body, and you wonder what you should do next. Go to bed. No, I want to do something first. Um, let's play some more games. Which game will you play? Not any more that stupid social game. We're going to play Sky's Room. You boot up Sky's room and are instantly transported to a field near a village where you last left off. You play as a high orc, so green skin covers your regular body, which is itself covered by legendary demonic armor. Oh, I'm OP. Okay. Oh, great warrior. A villager approaches you with a pleading expression. My village is under attack by the Radiance, Ra Radiance demonic army of horde hounds. We need help. Okay. Two dialogue options appear. Sure, I'll help or now I got better things to do. Of course I'll help. Oh, thank you, the villager says. He points in front of you. West, your compass says. Come, there, this way. He leads you down to the village where giant can canines are laying waste to the village. Slay them, hero, the villager exclaims. Please. No time like the present. Better get to it. You charge forward, swinging your weapon wildly and letting out a battle cry. The dogs look up upon hearing your approach, but you're too close for them to counterattack. The slaughter has begun. We're going to hack with our axe. You let out a war cry and charge forward. Hack with your axe. Blood spurts everywhere. Just keep axing them. A limb flies off and a dog howls. Wow. A dog falls back and poofs into loot. Poof. The hounds try to recover, but you're giving them trouble. Keep hacking. Last doggo. Let's do this. It's done. You gather the loot. 160 gold, lots of dog meat, and a mysterious gold amulet. And the quest is finished. One-handed weapons is leveled up. You look down at the amulet and suddenly hear a voice. You've slain my minions, hero, it says. You want to stop the ambushes? Come and see me at Carrion Rock and let's duel. Another quest pops up from your map and you grin. And that's when a message pops up, a stylized post-it note that reads, don't forget to go to bed, it's getting late. You wrote that for yourself for when you stay up too much playing games, you should probably go to bed. At least you had a fun Sky's Room session. You let out a yawn and put your VR port away. Then you crawl into your sleep sack and are soon in dreamland. You dream about, oh no, I'm dreaming about the union. I want the union to work out for real. That would be awesome. You can't get Carl and the union off your mind. You're eager to see if it actually takes off. If it does, it'll be the first time in a long time. Taking out your cell phone, you dial Carl's number. Two rings later, he answers. Hey, Karen, he says. I'm glad you called. Listen, I have a friend of mine from Arlington's who's eager to meet you. Are you able to come by the vending machines today? Uh, yeah. It's my day off. I can do it. Splendid. 
Carl exclaims, I'll see you soon then. And with that, he hangs up. You quickly climb out of your sleep slack and get ready to go. You debate on whether to bring food, but decide to just pick something up at the vending machine if you get hungry. And so you leave your apartment and set out for the vending machines, walking the path you take to get to the eyewear store. It almost feels like you're going to work, but you remind yourself it's your day off. You finally turn the corner and reach the vending machines. Carl is standing there. He smiles when he sees you. Hey there, he says. We're actually not going to talk here. I have a car around the corner ready to take us to our destination. Are you ready? Oh, this is sounding real sus. Uh, where are we going? <laughs> a little place in District 1. Your eyes widen. That's the upper class district. Why would you be going there? Carl continues. I have a friend there who wants to meet you. They're the one who sent me out recruiting. Oh my god, this, this union is sounding like maybe it's not even a union. What's going on here? Okay, who's this friend? A corporate worker, Carl explains. You'll meet her soon enough. Yeah, I don't like this either, Lunar. This is I, this is really suspicious. Maybe I shouldn't have been so gung-ho on this whole union. <laughs> uh, you follow Carl down the alleyway. At the end of it, you see a car. It's a really nice one, too. That's mine, Carl explains. Get in the back seat. I'll drive. You do so, but questions swirl in your mind. Why does Carl need union support if he's so well off, as this car would indicate? Maybe he's doing this for other people and not necessarily for himself? It certainly is strange. Yeah, I've never seen a rich person be interested in starting a union. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what's, what's up here. I don't know what's up here. Oh, thank you for the howl, Lunar. Thank you for the howl. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling maybe run. Okay. Finally, Carl parks the car. We're here, he says, stepping outside. You follow him, and your mouth drops open. The two of you are standing outside of Arlington's offices. Carl walks right up to the door like they're expecting him, and a moment later, the doors open on their own. After you, he says. You hesitantly walk inside. Yeah, very hesitantly. There's a fancy reception desk a few feet away, but Carl ignores it and walks to the elevator. We're going to the 17th floor, he says. That's where my friend is. Ding! The elevator opens up and Carl goes inside. You follow him and the door closes. Well, it's too late now. As the elevator goes up, there is a moment of silence. You decide to fill it with a question. Why do you need a union if you're so well off? Or so tell me more about your friend. No, I want to hear more about this. All I know is that I want to recruit people, Carl says. Besides, I'm not that well off. Ding. The elevator opens up and Carl steps out. You follow him. The two, are, two of you are in a narrow hallway and at the end of that hallway is a set of doors. Carl walks up to those doors and knocks. Amy? He calls. Come in, a voice replies from inside. He opens the door and you follow him. You step inside an elegant office, one that's way nicer than your apartment. Behind a mahogany desk, a woman sits, and she smiles at you. So you're Karen, the woman says, standing up. Carl's told me a lot about you, she gestures to him. Leave us to talk alone. Of course, Carl says. Clever, isn't he? Amy says as Carl closes the door behind him. He was built to be intelligent, but I must say, he's not very bright. Oh, well, there's always next time. Oh, shit, I knew that shit was suspicious. Built? Amy smiles. I'm about to tell you something that very few people in Neon City know about, she says. Consider yourself honored. Carl is an android. I knew it. Okay. Uh, she says to you, a robotic body with a very advanced AI. That AI has one goal to recruit people to the Arlington's Union. I must say, though, he can be very blunt about it. But like I said, there's always next time. She smirks, of course, even if he isn't quite aware of this fact yet. He thinks he's loyal Arlington's recruiter who works in the mines to pay the bills. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, androids exist? For now, we only have Carl. He's our big success story, Amy explains, but we're working on mass producing them as we speak. Progress is slow, but steady. She continues talking as if nothing happened at all. 
I was delighted when you told me that he found someone who works at the eyewear store. Amy gives you a smile. We want to get the edge over Digicore in VR eyewear and implants, and hitting them at their stores will be a nice start to that. There's a reason I brought you here, you see. You can help us get intel on the inner workings of their stores, and of course, we'll pay you for your time. Does 750 digibucks a day sound good to you? Yeah, yeah, it does. That's more pay than you make in a week. All you have to do is report on the inner workings of the store, and of course, we'll give you the occasional task to help us out. So what do you say? <gasps> oh my god, y'all, this isn't a union at all. I'm literally an Arlington spy if I do this. Okay, do I want to? Like, I mean, what what's to say that Arlington's not going to do the same awful things that Digicore is doing? But like, that's a lot of money, yo. That's a lot of money. Think about what I could buy with that money. Think about how many hot dogs I could buy with that money. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. I don't think this is being a good person, but I'm doing it. Okay. Splendid, a smile breaks out on Amy's face. I'm so happy we can work together on this. Trust me. Arlington has your back, Karen. Don't trust you. It doesn't. You're a liar. But thanks for the money. She reaches into her desk and produces a small chip. This is a listening device, she says to you. I'll need you to plant this inside the store somewhere management resides the sooner the better let's schedule this for tomorrow and you'll be paid for the task of course she hands you the chip and you pocket it just remove the film from the bottom of the device and it'll stick to any surface there's a pause well that's just about it for me she says with a smile it was a pleasure to meet you karen she opens the door you can see yourself out you'll get up from the chair and walk outside, closing the door behind you. Carl's waiting for you in the hallway. How'd it go? He asks. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, I can tell him. Oh, I should tell him. He doesn't, he needs to know about what his existence is. You're an android, Carl. Carl stares at you for a moment, then a laugh escapes him. Excuse me, I'm as human as you, he exclaims, playfully punching your shoulder. But hey, good one, Karen. You got a sense of humor. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I'm serious, Carl. Carl laughs some more, and then he clears his throat. Well, I better take you on home, then, he says, leading you to the elevator. Did you have dinner yet? I'll stop by the vending machines and grab something for you. And that's exactly what happens. You both drive in silence until you reach the vending machines. There, you tell him your order, he gets it for you, then he asks where you live. You tell him, eat your food, and soon the car stops in front of your house. All right, then, Carl says. I'll see you next time, all right? Thanks for joining us. You get out of the car, and he drives away. You watch him go, and then you go inside your home. You put your things away and get you, get in your sleep sack. Soon, you're fast asleep. Oh, no time for a game today? No scrolling? No game. Okay, day four. You wake up the next day feeling apprehensive. You're more than a little nervous doing this, but the 750 digibucks does tantalize you, even if you're scared as shit. You get out of bed and get ready to go. Then you pocket the chip and take a deep breath. Finally, you leave your house. You walk down to the eyewear store. You have to remind yourself a few times that you're not going there to work. You have a mission to do. Plant the chip somewhere management resides. That would be the manager's office, which is at the back of the break room. You go inside the store. Sam is the first to see you, and he gives you a wave. Hey, Karen, he calls. Thought you were off today. You here to shop? Um, oh, I thought I was working today. Let me talk to Harrison. No, I forgot something in the back. But I have to get in the manager's office, not just the back. I would assume a regular worker can't easily just walk into the manager's office without coming up with some reason to talk to the manager. So let's go with this one. Let me talk to Harrison. That's fine, but I'm pretty sure you're off today, Sam says. Then he notices a customer walk in and goes to deal with them. Phew. You make your way back and walk inside the employee area. At the back in the door, at the back is the door to Harrison's office. Looking around, you don't see anybody right now, but someone could walk in at any moment. Press your ear against the office door. Don't risk it. Just go inside. You just walk inside. Walk like you're... like When you're trying to do something shady, just move like you're supposed to be there, okay? This is my advice 
to you. <laughs> you decide to, to just go for it. You walk up to the door and open it. Nobody's there. Good. You go inside the office and the door closes behind you. You've never actually been inside Harrison's office before. It's small, almost too small, with a desk that's littered with papers, schedule, order forms, etc., and a computer monitor that's currently shut off. In front of it is a metal chair that's clearly seen better days. You remove the film from the bottom of the chip, revealing its sticky surface. Now, where to put it? Under the desk. You put the chip underneath the desk, placing it far from the front. That should be a good spot. You walk outside the office and stealthily make your way out the door. Yeah. Sam and Devin, busy with customers as you leave. Good. You don't want to have to explain anything to them. You go outside and immediately your phone rings. You open it. It reads, Amy Palmer has transferred 750 digibucks to your account. Hell yeah. Now what? You join the Arlington Union, talking to Carl and Amy. You agreed to help Amy plant the chip in the iStore. The chip was never discovered, and Arlington's paid you well for your actions. You continue to do things for Amy and Arlington's, mostly planting more listening devices in the eyewear store. You waited for the union to get into motion, but somehow it keeps getting pushed back. Just a few more days, they say. Then weeks. Then months. Someday it'll happen, you tell yourself. Someday. Oh no. I got bad ending, y'all. I got bad ending. Oh, dislike. Dislike. I just, I helped Arlington's and I didn't help myself or anybody else. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, here we go. Here's our credits. So written and programmed by Naomi Norbez. Contact the author on Twitter or via email. Yep, yep, yep. Um, cover in City State, Scape Art by Katie113. Portraits by Bobby, Tries, and Alex Stewart. CGs by Alien Raspberry Mares, Sensitivity Reader Lydia Caradonna. Music. Oh, the music was really good in this. Stavia Sphere, Komiku, Robert Abraham, Evangi Ronit, Ro Rogazin? Maybe? I'm not sure. Tracks used under an attribution license. Changes were not made to the tracks. Beta testers own a bunch of beta testers. Okay, well, let's save this run, I guess. Save. Wow, I can't believe it. I got bad end, you guys. I just helped Arlington's. I didn't help anyone else. All I did was get 750 digibucks to spend on hot dogs. So sad. All right. <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil too much of the game. And there's obviously lots of other um, ways that uh, that we can that you can play this game. Lots of other tracks you can go down. People that you can get connected with to with to get different endings. So if you guys are interested in seeing those, um, my my recommendation is going to be to go ahead and get the game. So let me switch back to webcam only for just a quick second because I want to pull this up for you guys. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so here's the game. Um, Norbez.itch.io slash eyewear-cleaner-2077. Here it is. Um, this was a response game to Cyberpunk 2077. There is a demo um, in the back garden of Spring Thing 2021. Uh, it looks like cover and background art is by, oh, the same Katie133. And it is um, 1451. I would say definitely worth it. I'm going to play it again to see the other tracks. I'm really curious about what happens if you get hooked up with the lady in the red dress instead. Um, I'm also kind of curious if you do report things to cops. I assume that's like Rodney's track in this game. So I want to see those, but um, I don't think we're going to show them on stream. I think I'm going to play those by myself. <laughs> uh, so I hope y'all enjoyed this. I thought it was really fun. It was really cool. Um, Bez writes the coolest stories, don't you think? I mean, this was pretty riveting, just like the... Um, the other game was the the Neopets game that we played. All right, y'all. You know what we do at the end of streams. Let's find somebody to go raid. Doesn't look like any of my friends are live right now. Do you guys do you guys have any friends that are live right now? It doesn't look like I have any. Let's see. Well, if I don't have any friends live, 
let's see who's streaming Stardew Valley right now. I'm still, you know, super into super stress. Oh, you do? Okay, Lunar. What's up, lady? <laughs> In the background. Lunar, who's live that we can go raid? Um, give me their give me their name. Give me their username. I was gonna pick a random Stardew streamer with low with low viewers, but um okay. Doubly bubs. Doubly bubs, let's make sure that they are not like on a break or something. Mm. That's not coming up with anybody, Lunar. Um, it's not working. When I put that in. They're playing Batman. Oh, I found it. Okay. I found it. Oh, starting soon. Okay, so they will be starting streaming soon then, so you guys will get to see everything. Alfred is hotter than Batman, don't at me. What? Okay, I guess <laughs> I guess they love old people. All right, well, here we go. We're going to raid um, double bubs. Raid double bubs. All right, you guys know how I do. Here's all my socials. Um, do all the things. Follow me. Go to my YouTube, etc. You get it. You know how it goes. And um, remember, I am not going to be here for a week because I'm going to be going on my cruise. So I will see you guys again on Thursday, the 28th, with more Final Fantasy X. So all right, guys, bye, y'all. And don't forget to make it a great day.